Hello, you metal pilgrims, and welcome to yet another episode of our interview series. Our today's guest, the front woman of Ukrainian melodic metal band Ignea, uh, Hal Bogdanova, will be speaking about the band's latest studio release, The Realms of Fire and Death, the process behind it. We'll open up about the next studio album, videos, touring, and much, much more. But as always, before we start, I'd like to take a moment and invite you to join the conversation and subscribe to Metal Pilgrim channel on YouTube and join our communities on Instagram, Facebook, or any other social media you actually hang out at to submit your questions for all future interview guests. Stay tuned with the updates and be the very first one to find out what is inside the latest rock and metal releases. And we are currently voting on the best rock and metal album of 2020, so make sure to head to our Instagram and Facebook pages, submit your vote and have a chance of winning a pretty cool Christmas gift from us. Here you go. How's it going? Uh, hello, um, it's great. Um, I'm over with the COVID uh, yeah. disease and now I'm out of the quarantine and there are a lot of things happening right now. So I'm really great. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're doing good. I know that you and someone else, right? And the band has got COVID uh, a couple uh, of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, the as well because we live together so oh, it shit. would be impossible yeah. you know for only one of us to manage. but everyone's but, safe every, everything's good now yeah yeah okay. we don't have any severe consequences so right thank god yeah, absolutely. Uh, for those of you who don't know, both the band and myself are sitting in exactly the same city, are from Kiev, Ukraine, yet we are not even able to meet because of the quarantine, for obvious reasons. But I'm glad, I'm really happy that you and, you know, and the bandmates are all safe and sound and everything's good. And actually, you know, while we're speaking about the COVID situation, um, I mean, this this sucks for everyone, yet, you know, kind of 7 billion people are exactly in the same boat at the moment. Um, but this will have some kind of consequences, right? Um, so do, what do you think will happen to the music industry and metal in particular, you know, especially the album release routine? Um, will, will it get back to normal or there is kind of new digital era we all have to get used to? I guess that uh, touring is something that is affected and will be affected most. But if you take the album release, I don't think that it's going to change a lot, but mm -hmm. you can all, you should also understand that for everybody it works differently because uh, for the bands uh, that are assigned to labels, they mm -hmm. have their procedure of releasing the album and touring and blah, blah, blah. And for example, for us independent bands, I think that all this situation even changed it for the better because mm -hmm. um, for example, we released our album this year mm -hmm. during the all the situation, uh, and uh, we only benefited from it actually. And because we uh, raised all the funds for our album uh, from our fans with the help of yeah. our fans, and we just delivered the album to them. We had great sales. We had like the only thing that we're suffering from is not being able to tour. But I really hope that after the vaccine is out, I think that by the beginning, maybe in summer, mm -hmm. I think that things will be slowly getting back to normal. Maybe we won't be seeing like huge festivals yeah. because I really doubt that they will be happening because they require, you know, tens of thousands of crowds. Yeah. But for example, again, for smaller bands, they will be able to, you know, uh, to perform in front of like 200 people or something. I think that it's it's bearable and I hope so because for example we have a couple of shows in May in Finland mm -hmm. but also, again we don't know if the borders will be open and for us like because we're from Ukraine not from the European Union it's like the most important thing. Um, yeah. But again, I think also one, one more thing is that huge bands, I think that they got closer to fans this year. That's true. Because and you know, some of the shows that people have been doing, you know, they're, they're a bit more intimate in a way, even uh, although you are not seeing the band. Yet I personally do believe that metal lives in clubs and festivals, you know, and uh, there's nothing that can beat the live audience. I mean, 
but we all uh, have to do our part wear a mask wash our hands this stuff is real i mean it's not it's not a made up thing so let's just uh, you know try to kill it as uh, as quick as we can i guess uh, and you know everybody do our part um but you actually did mention you know roughly half a year ago you guys released the, your third is it third yeah studio album the realms of fire and death it is like huh? the second full length album the second full length because the first one was ep yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So this was the year because we were um, we were working on it last year, and actually, like I mentioned, we crowdsourced all the funds through mm -hmm. our Patreon page, and we saw that a lot of labels they postponed the releases, you know, for their bands yeah. because for obvious reasons. But um, we just opened the pre-order for everybody, and then it, after it, in just one week, everything closed down. Mm -hmm. So. We already had a lot of pre-orders and we just couldn't say, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wait for another year. <laughs> yes, yes, and actually, I don't know, in general, it really went well for us. And uh, we have really a very supporting fan base from all over the world. So, and, you know, we also had a lot of um, live streams with our fans and mm -hmm. everything. So I think that we started like all this release stuff back in February and I was working so much on everything that to be honest, I even didn't notice like all these lockdowns happening because mm -hmm. in general, I was sitting in front of my laptop and working and doing interviews and maybe like advertising campaigns and everything. I just, I had no time to think that everything is really bad that's a good thing then i mean it kept you busy and kind of kept you sane during these days and this is this is amazing to hear um and what's usually your creative process like i mean how does it all of this you know all these bits and pieces kind of come into this one he's a piece uh well in our band everything is pretty easy because our keyboardist who is also the founder of the band mm -hmm. he writes all the music himself Mm -hmm. So usually he just uh, comes uh, to us with some demos, which sound pretty, you know, like a final song because yeah. he writes everything on his own. Then I come up with lyrics usually. Sometimes I write my own vocal parts. I also lay down like vocals for the demos. Sometimes like maybe the drummer can adjust some parts for him to to make it easier to play mm -hmm. and something like that then we rehearse and then we just go to the studio and record so it, it is a bit different because a lot of bands they 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 want to book a studio for one week where they i don't know they move in yeah they live there and then they write yeah yes, yes. but i don't know it's it doesn't work with our band and uh, it's also more expensive it's hard to you know combine with all the different schedules that we have so uh and we like we record all everything at the morton studio here in kiev so we also live here so for us it's really you know easy just to book our schedule for each band member and yeah. this is how it goes so makes sense absolutely but um do you personally think that this is your strongest uh, record up to date uh yes i i believe so i believe that this is the most uh, well thought record mm -hmm. because because this is how we work we worked in it absolutely differently compared to what we have earlier because um it is a concept album this is the first mm -hmm. concept album we've ever made and uh, it was also backed by a book of short stories that i wrote mm -hmm. so like there are really it's more than music it's like it's about storytelling and everything and this is actually the first album where we had all the demos like in good quality laid down mm -hmm. before we entered the studio mm -hmm. so like in the studio we just polished Okay. all the things apart from that uh this is the first album where the visual part and the musical part they go together because we had a designer and an mm -hmm. artist working on all the visuals and you can see it like in all our merch in all the artworks or like our web website like everything is combined together so that it looks like one piece and it sounds like one piece. I, I gotta agree with you on this one. I, I think the visuals especially, they are very coherent to the music itself and you know, to this feel of, uh, you know, of how it sounds and how it flows. 
um, in a way. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And looking back at it, would you actually change anything at all, or or you would just leave it as it is? No, I wouldn't change it, but because I have some marketing background, I would release maybe one or two more videos because, uh -huh. for example, especially for us, it works really well. Like YouTube brings us a lot of uh, new fans and Spotify brings us mm -hmm. a lot of new fans. And I just think that right now music, in most cases, it doesn't go without uh, visuals. So if you have an opportunity to shoot more videos, it would Do be it. <laughs> it would be beneficial at least like for us it really it really works yeah i mean videos always help you know i mean look at metallica with the latest album when was that like eight years ago now already but they released a video for each of the songs they did um yeah, yeah and it worked great i would i would i would uh, i would do it if i had like all the you know the finances but it's not only about finances it's really hard to find the team with whom you would like to shoot the videos mm -hmm. and uh, for example in our case we don't want to make like simple videos where the band just plays and mm -hmm. nothing else yeah. happens so we already have such a video but you know <laughs> at the same time at the same time it's also a bit different in terms of like you know uh visual effects and everything and um, yeah yeah it's hard to make something unique you know Absolutely, but maybe for the next album, I mean, who knows, and uh, this is gonna go like this, but actually speaking about, you know, new music, um, obviously you were not able to go on tour, which sucks on one hand, but on the other hand, you did have some time, you know, of, on your own and uh, for yourself a bit. Uh, did you guys use it to write any new material? And uh, if so, how's it going? Well, like I said, Yevgeny, our keyboardist, he writes uh, everything and actually he never stops writing. Mm -hmm. So it's um, he writes whenever like the inspiration comes to him. And right now we're working on like we won't be able to make a full length record next year. Mm -hmm. But again, as a person with marketing background, I understand we just cannot, you know, keep silent and Absolutely. we cannot, uh, mm, cannot do, cannot release kind of go without any other releases. That's why I thought that we could release a couple of singles mm -hmm. next year and uh, we will probably do it like with another band, like our fellow band, and maybe come up with a split record, mm -hmm. something like that. So I think that next year we will release a couple of videos, a couple of songs, and uh, we already we are polishing the demos right now. And I guess that at the beginning of the next year we will go to the studio and record nice excited to hear. Yeah, we need to we need to come up with the videos because it won't be working without them absolutely absolutely makes sense um and uh, since you guys are for obvious reasons not able to go on tour any plans for more live stream shows uh anytime soon i think that this is like the question that everybody asks us i mean about the uh, online obvious. concerts and everything yes but um we decided not to do it mm -hmm. uh, because Mm, we don't want to make it low quality and if you want to make to make it with good production mm. and everything it really costs a lot of funds and um it's still not a live show you know so it mm. doesn't bring you like all the energy and everything and there are a lot of things that can go wrong with this live stream and you know the, the whole world will be watching and everything so we decided like that we won't be doing live shows. We had online live shows mm -hmm. and we really hope that maybe by the end of spring, live shows will get back to yeah. normal because we had a lot of shows planned for this year and they will be postponed to the next year. That's why- Hopefully next year is gonna hope. happen, yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope so, because, um, again, the vaccine is already almost here and, uh, you know, a lot of people already had COVID, so maybe, that's, maybe it's kind of sad, <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of sad, but again, people will have antibodies at least for some time and everything. So I don't know, we just, we decided not to focus on online concerts mm -hmm. and everything. We had one live show in Kiev this autumn, yep. and it was a socially distanced show and everything. It, it felt very strange, but I think that we just received this 
a bit of energy from this live show to you know to live through at least half of the year <laughs> Yeah. And then we will see. We just, we just, uh, we're trying to to feel what's happening in the in, in the industry and adjust. That's all we can. Okay, makes sense. Absolutely, thank you. And um, just moving away from you know from uh, on one hand the realms of fire and death and you know in the new material that you guys are about to release and uh, more to general questions how do you actually keep your you know voice in such shape i mean do you have any kind of routine especially on handling a live session you know with the, the variety of range of you know vocal techniques that you use uh yes i have like some go-to's but it's nothing special mm -hmm. i think that everybody knows that stay hydrated like water water is the first thing that a vocalist needs I love uh, herbal teas, mm, mint tea, like mm -hmm. peppermint tea is really good for your voice and a lot of vocal coaches stress on it. Um, I sometimes use like the throat pastels from Vocal Zone mm -hmm. brand um, and like what influences the worst for me is, for example, if I have a show and if I talk a lot before the show. So sometimes you can keep your, your body fit and everything. Mm -hmm. But if you talk a lot before the show, your voice can just go down. And uh, for example, when we had one of the first tours, this is what I suffered most um, from because um, obviously you're meeting a lot of fans and you play the show, you go to the merch table and you want to talk to everybody. Like, for example, yeah. with our band, we're really close to our fans and everything. But then um, the merch table is situated at the venue and everything is very loud and you're trying yeah, to scream. scream. Yeah and everything and if you're doing it for two weeks <laughs> your voice will be <laughs> that's dead. it you're screwed <laughs> not that because you don't know how to sing and to use your voice but it's just exhausted and i really remember that we played the last show and i really mm -hmm. lost my even my talking voice for a couple of days mm -hmm. and it was very scary so that's why it was just a lesson to learn and i don't recommend it to <laughs> any vocalist so if you want to go and talk to your fans, maybe it's best if you just say, let's go outside and mm -hmm. talk mm -hmm. where it's quiet. Or maybe bring other band members with you to the merch table. So <laughs> they speak your sign. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, and I know it, 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 really, it really matters. And for example, I know that all the bodies are different. So for example, in my case, I don't drink alcohol on tour mm -hmm. because it really affects my voice. I can do nothing. Mm -hmm. So even if I drink like one bottle of beer, it That's will it. just dehydrate my voice and it will be it will be worse. I know that it's not like with everybody. So some people, they go full rock and roll on <laughs> tour. Not the case for me. And I believe that it's not the case for a lot of vocalists out yeah, there. Believe, believe it or not, I speak to a lot of people on the show. I mean, God knows that, right? And... Um, any vocalist I've asked this question says, hey, you know what? I don't drink on tour. I mean, I, I just don't because otherwise I'm like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so I guess this is the case, you know, for, for most people. It is. And it, it really depends on music because in our music, we have quite a huge range of notes that I should sing, like mm -hmm. from lows to highs and also extreme vocals. And that's why, you know, maybe if we had something easier to mm -hmm. sing, maybe it would be not that complicated, but... Absolutely. Yeah, makes sense. You know, and sound-wise, Ignea, um, have you guys have a very interesting mix, you know, of different genres. Um, incorporate a Middle Eastern motives there as well. So it's a, it's a really rich and interesting mix. And where do you guys look for inspiration? Um, is there, you know like one or a couple of musical influences in someone you look up to? Well, yeah, we, we have very diverse music and I think you should you should hear it on the latest record mm -hmm. because we also have the, like, you know, we have an acoustic ballad, we have um, a black and death metal mm -hmm. song, we have like some symphonic metal and everything. So I think that the main influence is that um, all our band members will listen to very different genres of music and we never 
stick to you know metal only mm -hmm. so maybe it's the main thing that influences us and for example our um our composer and um, keyboardist he for example he listens to a lot of um, world music and electronic mm -hmm. music so for example with all this middle eastern stuff he just loves how the melodies sound mm -hmm. so sometimes he can listen to you know turkish pop music and this is where he gets like all these melodies or maybe some you know um i don't know how to say so it's um, i think that symphonic metal and melodic metal is the least that we listen to <laughs> really we have it for, yes we have it a lot <laughs> in our music but it's just influence is not something that you can track where it comes from and sometimes it's even you travel somewhere and you hear something on the radio mm -hmm. or you see some buildings and they inspire you to write something and it goes with both music and lyrics and everything so absolutely yeah that's pretty cool um i'm conscious of your time so just a couple of more questions and uh, and that's it if you don't mind um it just is there just one band which you would absolutely die for to play on stage with? Um, I would go with two bands. Mm -hmm. It's Amorphis and Gojira. Okay, really? Okay. That's pretty cool. And, and the although, last one... Although I understand that, for example, Gojira and Ignea, they won't be going really well in terms of a package, you know, of, but I would love to just meet them on mm -hmm. backstage and talk to them. So maybe not within a club show, but at the festival, we would be glad to share. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I like a couple of weeks ago, I spoke to Melissa Boney of at Infinitum, and she said Slipknot. So <laughs> that would be that would be a pretty cool one, symphonic uh, version of duality. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the last one. This is something we usually do by the end of the episode. If you could share just one crazy ass touring story or just one show that you remember the most and you kind of can't believe that this happened, um, that you can legally possibly share with the, with the crowd, that would be great. Um, well, I think that we all have like a lot of funny stories on tour and everything, but it's really very hard to capture something. But I think that on, on the last uh, tour, huge tour that we had mm -hmm. we had a tour with butcher babies and cobra and the lotus throughout uh europe mm -hmm. and uh the package that we had like all the bands that we had we had a really great connection with all the band members and it was really cool and one of the last shows that we had it was a show in the netherlands um in arnhem it was a packed sold out show and it was like second show from the end and we just understood that this would be the last show for us to properly hang out together because after the last show everybody just has to rush to their airplanes yeah, and buses and everything and i don't know it was just a magical moment that um it was packed and all the bands were watching the shows of other bands mm -hmm. so you're performing on stage and you're seeing like not only the crowd that goes that goes nuts, but also like mm, like guys from the Butcher Babies and Cobra and the lot of Scarlet, mm -hmm. right? Like everybody are just you know um, cheering you up and singing along with your songs and everybody, and it felt so so crazy and so great. And I remember that it was so packed that we couldn't get through the crowd to the merch table. And mm -hmm. I think that I don't know we could. We should have crowd crowd served because it was like impossible, you know. <laughs> and um, but then, like the show that came after this one, it was the last show on tour, and this is the first time when uh, such thing as tour prank have uh, tour prank happened to us because this is like before we never experienced it, and um, yeah, we did a lot of crazy stuff on stage. <laughs> for, for example, for. Butcher Babies, uh, the rest of the bands. I think that it's a very popular thing to do, but when they were playing the last song, we just came on stage and we were tearing apart the drum set. So, I mean, by the end of the song, the guy only had one cymbal and maybe one <laughs> one drum to play. Uh, we also, like, with the song of Copper and Lotus, we went on stage and we were singing together. Nice. Like, it was, it was really cool and... 
yeah and the crowd was also amazed like by all, everything that's happening and i also learned that a lot of fans who know about such stuff they choose to go to the last show of the tour just mm -hmm. to witness all this touring prank that is happening yep. with a lot of absolutely absolutely well thank you so much for sh uh, sharing this hell and i really appreciate it i appreciate your time um uh, any last message for the fans um just stay safe stay sane uh don't forget without about all these isolation stuff and masks and uh washing your hands because we really want to get back to live shows as soon as possible and by doing this you're just bringing us closer to meeting in in our normal um <laughs> lifestyle true. so to say in an environment and um i know that like this year music industry it suffered a lot and just remember if you cannot help um, the artists financially just listen to music and just share it it doesn't cost you anything but it really it helps absolutely i second that and just as a reminder for those of you who don't know and who are new to Ignea, the realms of fire and death is already out uh make sure you check it out it's a great album it's full of you know variety yet at the same time it's very coherent and cohesive at the same time hell thank you so much for your time uh i appreciate it and i hope to see you in person uh very soon with all the madness uh over thank you Slava Ukraini. I hope Thank you. Hello, I'm Slava.